are back for Lit Sports Online, talking some free agency in the NFL and also some trade updates. We're only a couple days into free agency, but there's already been loads of trades happening and some key signings that we're going to talk about. So, gentlemen, let's discuss. Oh, by the way, we got Ross back on the table. Yeah, let's you welcome remember, back Ross. Come on, guys. Ross from uh, her first season. He's back. Ross. <laughs> and he's back with a beautiful beard. <laughs> I guess, why don't we just start the discussion off with uh, Kirk Cousins. Let's Vikings. talk about I mean, That's him. probably the thing everyone's talking about the yeah. most Highest right now. paid ever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Like, that kid's going to get paid. Not on top of that, the Vikings are making moves to get Trevor Simeon, who's going to be a career backup now. Yep. <laughs> Virtually sealed his fate. But, I mean, yeah, Kirk Cousins on the Vikings. I mean, I'm interested to see what this team can do, man. I mean, Kirk Cousins is a decent quarterback, and I think... Honestly, if Washington had a, if you know Washington was smarter, had built a team around them, they could have gone far. But who knows? Yeah, let's also not forget the Vikings have Dalvin Cook mm-hmm. coming back. Who did they not have most of this year? With Case Keenum at quarterback. That's true. Well, there's been a lot of I've seen like on YouTube and other places a lot of comments like people arguing over was well, Kirk Cousins really going to help them at all and stuff like that. And it's like. From my perspective, look how good they did with Case Keenum. A career exactly. backup. Exactly. Yeah. And now you bring in a guy that's actually got some pedigree. Now, again, is he worth the money they're paying him? No. no. But that's just the nature of the NFL now. Yeah. I mean, it's virtually like big name, big money. It doesn't even matter what you've done. I think I was reading a, um, a graphic earlier that said the top four quarterbacks that are getting paid right now. I think it was Derek Carr. Um, who else was it? Kirk Cousins. And there's one other one I can't remember right now. But... None of them had any playoff wins. So, I mean, that's just the name of the game now. You're a quarterback. You got a popular name. You're getting paid. <laughs> and, of course, the Vikings will have the Green Bay Packers to contend with next season. And they did bring in Jimmy Graham and Muhammad Wilkerson. So, they're making some strong moves, too. It's going to be an interesting battle between those two teams next season. I think. Yeah, you got a healthy Aaron Rodgers and now Jimmy Graham. I mean, I was really hoping the Ravens would make a move for Jimmy Graham. I think we're a tight end starved team, but... Ross, what about the moves we've made as Ravens? Well, we uh, did sign two receivers, but... We're only getting one. <laughs> about an hour and a half ago, uh, Ryan Grant failed his physical. How the fuck? <laughs> Full apparent ankle injury from the end of the Redskins season last year. So, <sighs> there goes one of our receivers we were going to sign. But, but. <laughs> with Oakland signing Jordy Nelson to a two-year deal, they unsurprisingly, released Michael Crabtree, who is currently on his way to Baltimore to visit here Friday. Give that man all the crab cakes. I want Crabtree in the state of the crab. Let's do it. Could you, could you see the marketing? It would be great. It, it's, it's what we do. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally, it's a match made in heaven. Crabtree in the land of the crabs. Let's go. <laughs> man, this is what the Ravens do. They 30-plus-year-old quarterbacks at the... And a career, Bolden, Mason. You receive it. Yeah. <laughs> somehow come here and do well, good. Yeah. I mean, I would have liked to get, you know, one of those younger guys. I was I was really I, hoping we would have got Landry, honestly. Our problem is we have no money. We have none. Those bad teams, Cleveland, they had a lot of money to spend. Let's talk about Cleveland. Jeez Louise, man. I don't know what's going to happen next year in the AFC North, but... Nope. I don't know what's going to – I mean, here's the thing. So, Cleveland's made a lot of moves. Tyrod Taylor, Landry. There's, they just got a running back. Carlos Hyde. Carlos Hyde. There's a lot of moves that Cleveland's making. But here's the thing. And I was talking to people on Twitter about this. They have a horrible culture. The, the team culture as a whole. Like, I mean, they've had stars up there. They've had some NCAA college studs up there. I mean, seriously. They get the first one or two picks usually every year. And somehow you have not managed to get you you didn't even get a win this year. Come on, man. Like, I don't care who you put on that team. I think that team's just cursed. Well, I think part of it was they started a rookie quarterback, and that's never a good thing for your team. They, and they've started a new quarterback. They have a new quarterback. I mean, Joe Flacco was a rookie quarterback and, and that, he went to the playoffs. <laughs> well, that's true, but I mean, <laughs> I mean the, the fact of the matter is most rookie I mean, we're so used to seeing guys come in and like do really well, like mm-hmm. the Prescotts and, and whatnot, but the truth of the matter is usually rookie quarterbacks struggle regardless of the team they're on. Yeah. They had a rookie last year who's now off the team, by the way. Yeah. They sent him to Packers. 
But I think bringing in Tyrod Taylor, I, I don't know whether they intend that to be their long-term option or just a bridge quarterback. But if he's a bridge, I think you can get him to maybe 7-9, and 8-8. Eight and eight. I think that's possible with the moves they're making. We'll see. It's possible. I mean, do I really see them really doing much with it, though? That's the sad part. No. I don't see Landry really signing a long-term deal with the Browns, though, honestly. Once his con- whatever contract he has right now is up, I have a feeling he's going to leave. I don't see him sticking with the Browns. It's really Unless awesome. they're throwing real big money at him, I mean they can. They yeah, have. Yeah, that's true. They 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 show someone a check. They don't care if they're Cleveland. Mm-hmm. And by the way, just so we're clear, it hasn't been all good moves for the Browns no. this offseason. They also shipped off two key defensive players, the Patriots, for virtually nothing. Got rid of Danny Shelton. Got rid of uh, Jason McCourty. So that could hurt them. But at least they're upgrading the offense. Yeah, the Joe offense. Joe Thomas is, retired. Joe Thomas did retire. I did see that which is opening up a huge hole on the offensive line. And unfortunately, there is not that type of offensive lineman in this year's draft, yeah, this which is... they could take now with the number one pick, but there oh. isn't one. What are they going to do with that pick now? Who knows? I was saying, before they signed Hyde, I thought it was gonna you be need to get Barkley. Yeah, I thought it was going to be get Barkley. Get a quarterback at four. Mm-hmm. And all the experts kept saying, no, no, I'll still take quarterback. I'm like, no. no. <laughs> get a running back. You have Tyrod. Like, switch it up, Browns. <laughs> but now, I don't know what they're going to do. There's no telling what the Browns are going to do. I mean, again, you made a great point. This isn't a big offensive lineman draft. Um, could maybe they start beefing up their defense? I could definitely see that bit as a possibility, if not a necessity at this point, getting rid of two of your key players. But again... It's about a month away from the draft, so I'm really curious to see what the hell the Browns are going to do. Not that it's probably going to matter because they're still going to have to take on the Ravens and the Bengals four times a year. <laughs> Another team that's made some a lot of moves, actually, is the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. They signed A.J. McCarron. They signed Chris Ivory, Vontae Davis, and Star Luda Lele. So that's a lot of guys to bring in. Some good defensive players there. Um, do you think these guys are rolling with A.J. McCarron as a starting quarterback next year? They have to. I mean... Yeah. I mean, come on. What the heck was his name? Peterman? Like, no. There's no way in hell he's going to be a starter. Yeah. (laughs) Like, is that like, that's got to be like a record somewhere. Like, somebody needs to look that up. Like, what the hell? That's more interceptions than some quarterbacks are throwing in a season In a whole season, yeah. Like, they're probably going to start A.J. McCarron. I mean, I think it was a dumb move for them to get rid of Tyrod Taylor. I think he was a decent enough quarterback. He got them to the playoffs for the first time in God knows how long. I mean, why would you get rid of the quarterback who looked like he was putting some life into your team? You built the team around him. Shit, you could have done something. Well, it's going to be interesting that they're bringing in McCarron because this guy has been a career backup on Cincinnati, and now he's, you assume, going to get a chance to start unless they draft a quarterback. That could be a move. That could be a move that they're doing, but... I don't. Who knows what the Bills? I mean, the Bills are so they're they're like the Browns a lot. It's like they're just yeah. they're just colder. It's more snowy. That's all. There are more snowy Browns. I mean, they're. I mean, these organizations are not run by geniuses here. No. <laughs> and I mean, I know I don't have a lot of room to talk because the Ravens have made some questionable moves over the last few seasons. But when it comes to the Browns and the Bills, I think their culture is just to lose, or to do enough. No, literally, it's just to lose, except yeah. for this season because the Bills actually got to the playoffs. Yeah. So, yeah, the Ravens might have not done the best recently, but there's a reason everyone wanted Eric DaCosta. Mm-hmm. And there was a reason the Ravens were like, no. Yeah. He's replacing Ozzy when I, whenever Ozzy wants to be and done. I can't wait until he's Ozzy is done. <laughs> I believe. Yeah. I ex- especially if Eric DaCosta is willing to go actually spend money. But mm-hmm. I believe this will be DaCosta's first draft. Okay. I believe he is in charge of the draft this year. I was hoping at first for Calvin Ridley. Then a while, I was like, no, you know what? They're talking to Landry, talking to this. Maybe not. Now we almost have to. Yeah. Another one I would like is the guy out of Maryland. Yeah. DJ Moore. Receiver. If we don't get Ridley, we're not getting more because he will not make it back to the second round. I know me and Holden were talking about You want the Rams to pick him up. (laughs) Yeah, actually, uh, what the article I wrote, DJ Moore is my top receiver for this draft, um, which definitely goes against the grain, but I honestly think he's the best receiver in the draft. I think he's going to, whatever team he goes to, he's going to be really good. Mm -hmm. He he shot up a lot of people's boards with the combine. Yeah. 
I mean, the combines can really build your stock. And I mean, of course, we'll definitely be talking about the combine and the draft in episodes to come. Um, but getting back to free agency, I mean, there's just been a lot of moves. And I love free agency, just to get kind of off the topics of the news on who's been signed and what. But that's the beautiful thing about free agency. It shakes up the season. Like, it could shake up an entire league in just a moment's notice. I mean, look at Richard Sherman being moved around down to San Francisco. Who would have ever thought that? Yeah. I mean, I mean, let's look at San Francisco for what it is. I feel like, honestly, Sam, Seattle, no offense to your Rams, have given up the throne in the NFC West and given it to the 49ers. Yeah, they've, they've definitely been completely dismantled. Completely dismantled. I don't know what is going to happen with the Seahawks. Honestly, my, get, my bet... It's going to come down to the Rams or the 49ers in that division, no question. And sorry, buddy, I think Jimmy G is going to get you guys. <laughs> well, we'll see. I mean, but I mean, Seattle definitely giving up the throne here. I looked at some of their moves, letting Sherman go. And that team is basically now just Russell Wilson and a bunch of garbage around him. So yeah. I, they're they're Which that's they're in the trouble. Team has been mostly. I believe Russell Wilson had almost all of the offensive touchdowns. Or some hand in the offensive touchdown. Well, they're, and now they're letting their best defensive players go, so they're they're screwed. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 setting themselves up for failure. I mean, there really is no telling what's going to happen with the Seattle Seahawks, but I digress. I mean, I think there, there's going to be a, quite a few moves coming in. I think me and Justin will probably be blogging about it. So of course, follow our blog. We'll definitely be tweeting about it. We always do, um, but. I mean, are there any other picks you guys want to yeah, talk I mean, about? Yeah, I mean, I mean, as for my LA Rams, I mean, they picked up Marcus oh, yeah, Peters sure. in a trade. I liked that, but then I, what I didn't like was they let a couple key guys go. Uh, didn't re- re-sign Sammy Watkins. He ends up on the Chiefs. Uh, they let Tremaine Johnson go. So mixed bag for my team as they acquire a good yeah. player, but also let a couple good players go. Yeah, I mean, I don't think your Rams will be hurt too much. I mean, you guys really were. A legitimate squad. Last well, now we year. need another receiver. That's why I want. Now they need to draft DJ Moore or someone good. I wouldn't be surprised from if this receiver class because now all you got is what Robert Woods and Cooper Cup. It's not yeah. good enough. I, I definitely see you guys looking for a receiver in a draft. But yeah, of course, if you wanted Jimmy Graham tight end. I did. I Eric wanted Ebron him. is now free. Ooh, he could be coming here. Man, the Ravens have please. been reported interested. Ozzy, can you please if you. God knows you're probably not watching this because you don't give a shit probably about YouTube or especially LitTube. But if <laughs> by any miracle of God you are watching this, go after someone that can catch the ball for Joe from Joe Flacco. If we're not going to get a new quarterback, at least give him somebody to throw to. Please, please. That is my plea to you. Speaking of which, you guys missed out on <laughs> Allen Robinson. He went to the Bears. as Well, Trey Burton, there's a tight end you could have. So Bears making some moves too. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the Bears. We have, we have no money. We That's have not. Ravens problem. We, we are poor, If you look at some of, the, some of these contracts that some of these receivers It's all tied up on Joe Flacco. I can't even say that really anymore. Can we really still say that? I mean, yes and no. I, I'm not <laughs> sure. But I just think it's mismanagement of money across I mean, the board. <laughs> draft, draft wise, yeah, Marlon Humphrey. I loved him. Mm-hmm. Love him. It's going to eventually solidify the number two corner. Yeah. Along across from Jimmy Grant, Jimmy Smith. But there's some people that we've passed on. Mm -hmm. Oh, 100%. Cooper Cup. Yeah. There's so many receivers that we've just passed on. So many. Juju Smith. We passed up on Juju Smith, and now look at him. Stefan Diggs. We passed him multiple times. That's the thing. Like, the Ravens have a history of passing up on guys that legitimately become good. And of course, Going into a draft, you're not, you never know what's going to happen. You have no idea what's going to happen with this guy, but I've seen so many receivers come and go for us just to get a receiver, as I like to say, off the goodwill basket, getting some old-ass receiver and hoping for the best. Yeah, Jeremy Macklin, I'm talking to you. Goodbye. I, I would. <laughs> the only thing with Macklin I would say is I would have liked to see him have a whole offseason and preseason with Flacco. Yes, his injuries did. Didn't help him to help his case, which that part, yeah, I'm kind of glad he's gone. Yeah. But to start off the year, Flacco missed the entire preseason. He was catching passes from Ryan Mallett. That's yeah, true. He's, I would just like to have seen a whole offseason. I understand why he's gone. His injuries was not worth the not money. Not to mention he, I mean, you watched some of, you watched every Ravens game like I watched most of them. 
that man was dodging balls. Like, he was getting away from catches because he didn't want to get hit. That, that last Steeler game, I have no excuse of what none. he was doing on there the was side none. on that. He yeah. easily could have hopped that one. Exactly. There's no reason why we shouldn't have won that game. And I'm not going to only put it on him. But, yeah, dude, if he had it went for a pass, maybe we might have had a chance to win the fucking game. <laughs> There's also one other wide receiver there from the Ravens that no one's really talked about much is Crab. I mean, um, Campanero. Yeah. He's also a free agent. Is he? I believe so. I would like to bring... I would like to bring him back. I like him. Uh, Especially if he can stay healthy. He Mm -hmm. can be a little punt returner. He can be a slot guy. Yeah, I mean, he caught one of the few receiving touchdowns last season. Mike Wallace, I'm... Mike Wallace is, 50, 50, he's but, probably going to retire, so I wouldn't be surprised. Our only problem with Wallace is he cannot be our number one. Never. I, I don't think he's a number one receiver at That's this age. That's why he did better when we had Steve Smith. Mm-hmm. When he had to be the number one, none. Mm. The only other things we could really be worth mentioning for free to see, because there's a couple more quarterbacks. Sam Bradford, now in the Cardinals. Is he going to be their starter next year? Possibly. Or maybe he's just another bridge guy. Why do people maybe a backup. keep hyping... Maybe there's drafted Bradford. quarterback. I don't know what the Cardinals are doing. And then we got Case Keenum going to Denver, as long, along with Shaq Barrett. So two guys, Denver getting... You figure they're starting Keenum next year. Yeah, yeah. No question. Yeah. I mean, if Keenum plays like he did last year, yeah. I mean, build a team around the kid. That's why I say you get a good quarterback, build a team around him. And I don't understand why NFL teams are so scared to do that. I do like 49ers, what they're doing with Jimmy Garoppolo. They're going to build a team around that guy, and I think they're going to be good for a long time. Well, I think what Denver's probably hoping here is that Case Keenum ends up being the discount Kirk Cousins. I think it was one of those things where yeah. maybe they really wanted Cousins, but were like, yeah. can we really pay all that money? Uh, let's just bring in Keenum. We didn't get Cousins. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That's true. I mean, it did probably become a bit of a bidding war. And, of course, Denver's like, man, we're not going to pay that much money for him. He's not worth it. <laughs> So let's say, Vikings, why don't you give us your starter, your old starter? But, they, I mean, they sure as shit couldn't have rolled with the guys they already had for next year. No, I mean, that, that was they, they, they had they, to upgrade. Well, they, they let them all go. Yeah. And then Mike Zimmer goes and bashes Case Keenum. <laughs> Life comes at you fast. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you guys uh, might remember Torrey Smith. Yeah. He's now on the, the Carolina I really, Panthers. I really wanted the Eagles to release him. Uh, you were hoping to get him for us, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, hey, look, the guy got his ring. Let's see what he can do with Cam. I would like to see him back in Baltimore, but it didn't happen. Not to mention also talking about Carolina, not Carolina, about the Eagles and former Ravens, Haloti Nada, now a part of that Eagles defensive line. And, I mean, yes, Haloti Nada is up there in age, but he's still a force to be reckoned with. That de- That defensive line that was so, like, you know, important last season is going to be even more of a threat this year. There's no question. I mean, the way the Eagles are stacking up, hey. Yeah, yeah. Philly made some nice moves on Very the defensive nice. side of the ball in particular uh, this offseason so far. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. That they, I mean, you're talking about Super Bowl champions coming back and boosting their squad even more. Uh, of course, you still got the draft to go, but they're, they're, yeah. they're, they should be strong. They're setting up. They still have not traded Nick Foles. I'm, I was just talking about Justin, talking to Justin with that about before the show. I mean, you got to think Nick Foles, yeah, grand the fact he is a backup, but people are going to look at the fact that he beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, and they're going to say, maybe he could do something for my team. I could see him being a trade probably around the draft, maybe slightly after the draft, definitely getting some big names. I mean, he could definitely pull a lot of weight just with his name alone. The only problem with that is now a lot of the teams that needed quarterbacks got quarterbacks. filled them. Damn. That is a good point. I mean, who knows? I mean, the Eagles might be, you know, long balling this one in hopes that, you know, Wentz is healthy the whole season next year. But, hey, if not, and Wentz's injury becomes an issue, you know, his recovery from that injury becomes an issue, they still got foals. I well, mean, I mean, they, they basically have the perfect backup quarterback situation. So and he's no happy where he's at. Anything. But yeah. if a team does come along, like let's say early on next year someone gets hurt and team wants to trade for Foles, mm-hmm. right price, I'm sure they'll do it. Yeah. I mean, and then again, you got a team player, Nick Foles, who is happy where he's at. He's like, yeah, I could probably play for another team and start. But look, I'm doing my job. Look what happened last time I did that. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he's doing it. Hey, he's playing, he's playing the part. That's what he's doing. And hey, good for him. <laughs> 
So that's pretty much going to do it for this episode, guys. I mean, again, we are making this video early on in the process, but there's still a lot that's already happened. Uh, there's, there's still some more things to happen, but uh, make sure to tune in next week as we're going to have our draft special. Uh, Not doing our week, mock draft. Probably the week after. In one of the coming weeks, yeah. we'll be doing our mock drafts, so keep an eye out for that. Next week is a possible wing challenge. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we appreciate Ross Welcome coming back. back, buddy. Thank you. For Great a good to have showing. you back uh, on the table. And stay tuned to Lit Sports Online and the rest of Lit Tube's videos. Yeah, don't forget also, as the, it gets closer to the draft, as the offseason really unfolds, me and Justin do a lot of our blogging around this time. We also have guest bloggers, so like... If you are local, you want to work, you want to write for us. Just hit us up. We got our email down below. Serious inquires only. But hey, if you want to write an article for our blog, hey, we'll put you on. Take care.